If you're finding these videos useful, you can learn more and support this work by getting my book on data analysis with Rust Notebooks. It's a practical book that teaches you the concepts and how they're implemented in practice. All the code examples are written in Rust with Rust Notebooks for each section. You'll have unlimited updates as new sections are released. And of course, you'll have access to these supplementary video tutorials. Check it out by clicking the link in the description or visiting store.shahinrastami.com directly. You can also become a patron at stamilabs.com to get access to support, exclusive content, and make requests for new content. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to get up and running with Rust and Jupyter Notebooks. To do so, we're going to cover the installation of Miniconda, the creation of an environment, the installation of packages and extensions, the installation of Visual Studio build tools and Rust, the installation of the Avixa Jupyter kernel, and the run through of a quick test. There are many different ways to get up and running with an environment that will facilitate our work. One approach I can recommend is to install and use Miniconda. Miniconda is a free and minimal installation of the Conda package management system. Let's visit the Miniconda download page and download the installer relevant to our installation of Windows. We'll then work our way through the installation wizard, including the license agreement, installation type, destination folder, and advanced options. After kindly declining the learning resources and finishing the installation, let's open up the Anaconda prompt. First, we'll need to create our environment. I'm going to call mine DARN for data analysis with Rust notebooks. This may take some time whilst it downloads, extracts, and installs packages. So let's fast forward. Good to go. Now, what we need to do is activate the new environment that we just created. If you see the name of your environment within parentheses on the left, you know you've done it right. Now, let's install Jupyter Lab, which is an IDE for our Jupyter Notebooks. I'm going to install a version that I know works with my packages and my plugins. This may take some time, but when it's finished, we're going to want to install CMake. Up next is Node.js. This is required to display our interactive plots within Jupyter Lab. Speaking of interactive plots, we're going to need to install the Plotly extension for Jupyter Lab. And if we want a nice looking IDE, we can install Theme Purple Please. Installing the theme is entirely optional. Now let's look towards installing Rust. To do so, we'll visit rustup.rs and download the installer. With Rust up running, we can see that we've been asked to install the C++ build tools before proceeding. Let's take the easy route and use the link to the build tools for Visual Studio 2019. After downloading and installing the Visual Studio installer, we're presented with a list of tools that we can continue to install. If you already have this installer installed, or like me, you forget to check the box for C++ build tools, it's no problem, because you can just open it again and tick the box and install it. Let's rectify that mistake on screen for completeness. We'll modify our installation of build tools, make sure to check the box this time, and click Modify. At this point, you're going to be asked to reboot your computer. Don't do what I did and click not now, it actually requires this reboot. Once we're fired back up, let's open up the Rust up installer from before and proceed with the installation by selecting option one. Once Rust is installed, let's close everything up and open up the Anaconda prompt once again. Let's activate our environment from earlier and use Cargo to install Avixa Jupyter. We'll then need to use one more command, which if we enter it correctly, we'll read avixa underscore jupyter space dash dash install. And we're done. We're finally ready to load up Jupyter Lab and have a look at a Rust notebook. 
If you see this Rust logo as an available notebook option, you should be ready to go. But if you did install Theme Purple Please earlier, now is a good time to enable it. Now let's create a Rust notebook and be predictable by printing out Hello World. Let's demonstrate variable persistence by assigning the string hello again to message and then outputting the contents of the message variable in a different cell. Let's wrap this up by adding a few numbers together. That's it for this video on getting up and running with Rust Notebooks on Windows. If you're finding these videos useful, you can learn more and support this work by getting my book on data analysis with Rust Notebooks. It's a practical book that teaches you the concepts and how they're implemented in practice. All the code examples are written in Rust with Rust notebooks for each section. You'll have unlimited updates as new sections are released. And of course, you'll have access to these supplementary video tutorials. Check it out by clicking the link in the description or visiting store.shahinrastami.com directly. You can also become a patron at stamilabs.com to get access to support, exclusive content, and make requests for new content.